But if you get down to reality, what is important is whether you can program computers so that they can think and learn in a sufficiently human-like way to be really useful assistants and companions. We've seen how computers can already communicate in written words that suit human beings. Getting intelligent machines to understand the spoken word is left. proving a tougher nut left. to crack. Left. 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 Down. Down. This robot arm at the Machine Down. Intelligence Research right. Unit at Edinburgh is right. learning to respond to right. vocal instructions. Right. 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 It's important to realize that in a sense the machine is learning this trick for our benefit. Today's intelligent robots tend to be more efficient if they work things out for themselves. This IBM robot at Yorktown Heights can draw a map of Japan. Big deal. But if you put in a smaller piece of paper, the system spots the change immediately and makes all the internal adjustments necessary to cope with the new problem. Marry the advances in intelligent robots to the evolution of intelligent computers and the possibilities seem almost limitless. There's absolutely no principle of science or even engineering or practicality that gives any hint as to why we would run into some limitation. Uh, it's clear that computers will be able to have enough memory. It's clear they'll be able to do enough processing. It's clear that in every physical way, the computer will be sufficient. The only thing that stands between us and having intelligent systems is one thing. There's a few things we don't know how to do, and we're making progress. And whether that progress will continue to come slowly over years and decades, I don't know. But early in 1982, an announcement was made of a project that could catapult Professor Fredkin's projections much nearer than he expected. A team of Japanese computer scientists had visited all the major research centers for artificial intelligence in the USA, making careful notes. Then they went back home and launched a massive fifth generation computer development program of their own. Head of MIT's Computer Science Laboratories, Professor Michael de Tuzos. I found out about the fifth generation computer project for the first time from one of my faculty, who had gone to Japan, learned about it, came back and spoke to us, describing its aims. The aims of the fifth generation computer project are to construct machines and software that will understand spoken language in French, English, Japanese, whatever, that will translate language from one such language, such as Japanese, to another, such as English, and that will make possible expert systems, uh, systems that can answer questions about law, about medicine, about finance, in effect, leading toward progressive automation of the service sector of the economy. I found myself and several of my colleagues in shock when we heard about it. The reason was that in that plan, we discerned pretty much, I would say, 80 percent of the research charter of our own laboratory, a laboratory that is aimed at researching the future 10, 15 years out. This is not just academic peak. Co-founder of NASA's Goddard Space Research Institute, Professor Robert Jastrow explains. The whole idea, the idea of building a quasi-human brain was in the province of the universities and the theorists, but it's suddenly become vital because the Japanese are trying to gain control of the world's computing industry from the United States. And you must remember that's a $200 billion a year business, or soon will be, within three years. And that makes it the biggest business in the world next to petroleum. Look at it from Japan's point of view. They have no natural resources to speak of, and the information revolution needs no natural resources. Bits cannot be depleted. They have an electronics infrastructure. Uh, they're competing very successfully with us in that sector. So they can rest on it and build the information revolution on it. What more natural for them than to go after it? Now, uh, whoever controls the information revolution okay, is very much in the same position as whoever controlled the Industrial Revolution. In effect, think of what England and the United States had by way of control in the Industrial Era. And you have a picture of what Japan might have if it succeeds in the Information Era. The Japanese have already taken steel and automobiles from the United States. If they win this one, they'll knock us back into the Stone Age. So we Americans have a tremendous stake in seeing that doesn't happen. And what about the United Kingdom? Will we get a look in? 
The UK can play a tremendous part, and there are initial stirrings already. Most people know that the Department of Industry, under the initiative of the Minister of Information Technology, set up the ALVI Committee. Uh, they've recommended the spending over an eight-year period or so of very large sums of money in the hundreds of millions. Uh, given that that could be put in the hands of the scientists who are actually going to do the job, and means taken to bring some of our lost exiles back from overseas, then we can do it. But so far, we've had a fine report, we've had many meetings, we've had a lot of talk, we've had no action, uh, the funds are not yet reaching the people who have to do the work. The picture for the future may be uncertain, but one thing can be guaranteed. Research will continue, if not here, then elsewhere. Economic aspects apart, we have to be sure that fifth generation computers, super intelligent machines, these quasi-human brains as Professor Robert Jastrow calls them, are used in a humanitarian way. The specialists whose brains are picked to program expert systems are delighted to produce machines that are cleverer than they are. They feel a pride of authorship. But what about the rest of us, who, as Professor Weizenbaum said, have not been consulted? How will we feel? Over to Monte Carlo, where in 1979, Dr. Luigi Villa scaled the pinnacle of his gaming career by winning a glittering world championship tournament. The game was backgammon. Far away in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at Carnegie Mellon University, a computer program trained to learn backgammon had been devised by Dr. Hans Berliner. The day after Dr. Villa's World Championship match, he played against Berliner's computer program. The computer's moves were made by a robot. The computer thrashed the world champion seven games to one. What was Villa's reaction? Dr. Berliner won't easily forget it. Well, I think he was extremely disappointed at having won the world championship the previous day and now losing to a machine that he rather expected to beat rather easily. I told him I was sorry that it had happened, and, but because it was a nice day for me. <laughs> Never before has man had to share his planet with a competing intelligence. How can we assess the situation when it has no precedent? Professor Fredkin. Now, there... When you put all of this into some kind of perspective, <clears throat> in some sort of universal terms, what we see is that uh, I think of it as three great events in a sort of history. Uh, one might be like uh, the creation of the universe is obviously uh, the biggest and most important event. Uh, the appearance of life, which is a uh, almost magical organizing principle uh, and is extremely diverse, as we see on this planet, is another major event. A third one, which I think is equal in importance, is the appearance of artificial intelligence, which is a kind of form of life that's very different, that has possibilities for intellectual achievement that are hard for us to imagine. Our descendant will not be the child of the loin, but the child of the brains, the thing we call the computer, uh, which does not have to pass through the birth canal and uh, does not grow by a tablespoonful of gray matter every 100,000 years, which is the case in the rapid growth of our brain, but grows a factor of 10 in power every seven years, the computer generation. There's no question but that it will match us in narrow reasoning power by 1990 and go beyond us to become the uh, great new intelligent race of the future. And the question is, where will that leave us? Well, we're not the only creature on this planet to be able to do physical things, and many other creatures can do some of the physical things better than us. We can't win a fight with the line, for example. And on the um, intellectual area, once computers do that better than we can, I think it'll have actually a very beneficial effect. Once the shock uh, passes, uh, the shock of knowing machines can do things better than we can. That beneficial effect will be that uh, 
we will have a burden removed off of our back, which is the burden of being the sort of supreme intellectual creature on the planet. We have to worry about everything today that isn't worried about by God. And when computers come along, they'll be able to worry about a lot of big questions that we're basically incompetent to worry about. What this will mean is that we will, in some sense, finally find our niche where we fit in, and there'll be a limit on the bottom, which we already know, but there'll be a limit on the top. Rather than being, in some sense, a limitation uh, to us humans, uh, I believe that that kind of having a niche will uh, allow us to finally fulfill our destiny as humans because we will know what we are and we'll be able to go about doing it and having fun, as it were, without worrying about all of the two big issues that we're incompetent to handle. Hello, Igor. Hello, Igor. Hello, Igor. Hello, Igor. Hello, Igor. Down. Right. Right. Up. Right. 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 Up. 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 Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. Do you think coming here will help you not to be unhappy? Well, I need some help. That much seems certain.